Inductors are old but still very important devices for an electrical engineer. They are used in many devices such as filters and switched mode power supplies. Modern chargers for our mobile phones would not be this small without them. However, the requirements for such circuits are becoming more and more challenging, which means that the parasitic properties of the used components are playing an increasingly important role. Engineers are finding it more difficult to develop circuits that pass all the necessary tests on the first try. Simulations help them, but require accurate models of the components to deliver accurate results. In this video we will present a way to create models of inductors out of measurement results. If you have not seen the video about S-parameters yet, we recommend to watch it first. Otherwise, the first part of this video could be a bit confusing to you. In this video, we describe the method to measure the S-parameters from two board devices. The standard file format produced by Vector Network Analyzer is the so-called touchstone file format. The header contains so-called metadata and gives information about the measurement itself. The first line shows the unit of the frequency. It can be given in hertz, kilohertz, megahertz or gigahertz. Furthermore, it shows the format of the S-parameters, which can be specified in decibel angle, magnitude angle or real imaginary. At the end, the system impedance is given in ohm. The next block of the file consists of information about the measuring device. However, this block is not present in all files and can vary from device to device. Nevertheless, this information is useful, especially if we want to use the measurement data after a longer period of time. The actual measurement data follow after this block. The first column contains the frequency. Then the S-parameter follow in the order S11, S21, S12 and S22. Each parameter needs two columns in the format given by the header. By the way, you can conclude from the file extension how many ports were measured. If it was a one-port measurement, the file extension is S1P. For two ports, it is S2P and so on. For this video, we want to take this inductor as an example. It was measured with this VNA in a frequency range between 9 kHz and 1 GHz. A plot of the measured S-parameter is shown here. It can be easily observed that S11 and S22, respectively S21 and S12, show the same curve. This kind of behavior is called symmetry and is typical for passive two-port devices, such as inductors. For electrical engineers, who are not so much involved with high-frequency measurements, the representation of S-parameters is a little bit unfamiliar. Therefore, we want to plot the impedance curve of the inductor out of these parameters. But how do we do that? In the video about S-parameters, we saw that there are two ways to connect the component to the VNA, in shunt-through connection and in serial-through connection. As mentioned there, the serial-through connection is more suitable for inductors, since it gives better results for larger impedances. Our device under test is connected in series between the two ports. Since we know that the system impedance is 50 ohms, we can calculate the impedance of the component from the formula for the insertion loss. So, with this conversion, we get the impedance curve of the inductor over the measured frequency range from 9 kHz to 1 GHz. We can represent it in our usual representation as magnitude and phase. To analyze it better, the diagram is drawn as a double logarithmic plot. In this video of our colleague Sabrina, we have shown you how a simple model of an inductor looks like. This model covers the low frequency range. 
mainly the main resonance and the copper losses are modeled. But as we can see in our diagram, at higher frequencies other resonances appear, which are not covered by the simple model. Let us go now through the modeling process step by step. First, we want to measure the main inductance, which correspond to the nominal value of the inductor. We see that at the first slope of the impedance curve, the phase shift corresponds to 90 degrees. To calculate the inductance, we choose one arbitrary point on the slope and read the value for the impedance. With the formula for the impedance of an inductor, we can then calculate the inductance. It should be noted that the copper losses cannot be measured with this method, since it has to be measured at DC voltage. We must therefore determine these with a separate measurement. After the first peak, which is also called main resonance, the inductor shows a capacitive behavior. This resonance can be modeled by a parallel capacitor. To determine its value, we can again read the impedance at one point at the slope, and calculate the capacitance via the formula for the impedance of a capacitor. What is missing are the iron losses, which occur as damping of the main resonance, or in other words, they determine the Q factor of the main resonance. So, we simply take the height of the peak as the value for this resistance. But it has to be noted that the measurement of this peak is not so easy if the impedance value there is very large. So far, our model has not been different from that of Sabrina. But if we want to take this model for the simulation in higher frequency ranges, we have to take the additional resonances in account. One way to take these resonances into our model is to add more resonance circuits to our main model. In the case of an inductor, we can connect parallel resonance circuits in series to the main resonance. For each resonance peak we want to have in our model, we need one additional resonance circuit. Unfortunately, determining the values for these additional resonance circuits is not that easy. Additional components will also shift the main resonance a little bit. Therefore, we have to correct the values for the main resonance. This can be a very time-consuming task if you do this by hand. To make our life easier, we developed a program that automatically performs such a fitting. You can find the link to the script in the video description if you are interested in it. At the end we get this model. We can use it directly with a program like LTSpice. As we can see, the simulated impedance curve fits very well the measured one. We are now able to model an inductor perfectly, right? Unfortunately, this is not true. Inductors show more physical characteristics that are not included in this model. For example, the inductance can be dependent on the current flowing through it. The reason for that is the saturation of the used ferrite core material. Also, temperature effects are not included in this model. In the future, we will make more videos about the modeling of these effects. In this video, we have seen how to generate a possible model from the measurement file of a vector network analyzer by the clever choice of components. Starting from a basis model, we saw how we can extend this model to model the resonances that occur at higher frequencies. I'm Christoph with the Institute of Electronics and the Institute of Microwave and Photonic Engineering. We hope you've learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching.